Okay, so today we're learning about compound or inequalities. So compound or inequalities, a compound sentence is when you're joining two complete sentences with a conjunction. And today we're looking at two complete sentences with a conjunction of or. Tomorrow we will look at compound and inequalities. So again, a compound sentence is when you are joining two complete sentences. So here we are joining the sentence n is less than or equal to negative 4 and or n is greater than or equal to 2. So notice there are two complete sentences joined with the conjunction or and that is called a, complete, a compound or sentence. So notice in number 1 it is not a compound sentence. In number one, it is just a regular inequality. It just says all numbers less than three. That is not a compound sentence. Again, a compound sentence says that you must have two, one, two sentences joined with a conjunction. And we are looking at the conjunction or. I went to the park or I ate my vegetables. Right, I'm joining two complete sentences with the conjunction or. In math, we can join two inequality sentences with the conjunction or. And again, tomorrow, we will be looking at conjunctions, compound sentences, joining with an and. So again, number one is not a compound sentence. It's just a regular inequality. And it says all numbers less than three. And all numbers less than three would be an open circle and everything to the left. So right now we're just graphing, and remember we're graphing the solution, sentence numbers that would make the sentence true. Number two is not a compound sentence. It is just a regular single inequality, right? To be a compound, you have to have two sentences joined with a conjunction. This is just one sentence, so it's just a regular compound sentence. And we want all the numbers that are greater than or equal to negative 4. So remember, we have to do a solid circle, and then we have to shade everything greater than. So hopefully by now you've got your graphing skills down really well. Okay, so here on number 3, we actually have a conjunction. So again, on number 3, notice that we have two sentences. We have the sentence, all the numbers less than or equal to negative 4, or all the numbers that are greater than Two. To be a solution to a compound sentence, so to be a solution to a compound sentence for an or, for an or, it has to make at least one of the inequalities true. So for an example, let's plug in the number three into the red sentence. So if we plug in 3 into the red sentence, we say, is 3 less than or equal to negative 4? No, that is false. That is not true. So, so the number 3 does, is not a solution to this red sentence. However, is 3 greater than or equal to 2? What happens when I plug in 3 there? That is a true sentence. So while it doesn't work for the red sentence, it does work for the blue sentence. And as long as it works for at least one of the inequalities, it is said to be a solution to the compound sentence. So remember, we actually have two sentences, right? We have two sentences and a solution as long as it works for at least one of them. So we can say all the solutions are, so we've got negative four and positive two. So notice I'm gonna put the numbers on the number line. Um, as they would go on a number line. And so all the numbers less than negative four equal to negative four would be to the left. And all the numbers greater than or equal to two would be on the right. So basically, if we were to pick any number that was to the left of negative four, it would work for the red equation. And if we were to pick any number that was greater than or equal to two, it would work for the blue equation. So this is said to be the solution. So the solutions are numbers to the left of negative four and numbers to the right of two. 
right? Because as long as it works for at least one. Let me show you again. What if I pick the number negative five? Notice negative five is in the red zone. If I plug in a negative five is a negative five less than or equal to a negative four. So notice I plugged it in there. That is a true sentence. Negative five is smaller than a negative four. But what if I plug it into the second sentence, the blue sentence? Is a negative five greater than two? That is false. Notice that negative five, which is over here, did, did not work for the second e inequality, but it did wake, work for the first one. And as long as it works for at least one of them, it is a solution. So that means all of these numbers will work for at least one of them. So this is your entire graph. So notice how they go to the left and to the right. So that's almost always what happens. So compound sentences are two sentences joined with the conjunction. And today we're looking at compound sentences that, have, that are joined with an or. So we want all the numbers that are greater than one or all the numbers that are less than negative five. So we're gonna put a one and, whoop, that's not where one would go, right? We got negative one and negative five. So wouldn't we put negative five over here and then one over here, right? So we gotta make sure we're putting our numbers on the number line correctly. So we want all the numbers greater than one wouldn't that be over here? And all the numbers that are less than or equal to negative five, shouldn't that be a solid? Wouldn't that be there? So that's what your graph should look like. Now you, you wouldn't be doing your graph in color, you'd be doing your graph in black. So basically any one in the blue section will work for that inequality, and any one in the red section will work for that inequality. And as long as it works for at least one, it's a solution. So because you guys will be using pencil or black pen or whatever device you're going to be using, right, it would look something like this. So all the numbers greater than 1 would be everywhere to the right, and all the numbers less than or equal to, did you do the solid because of the equal to symbol, would be to the left. So that's what your answer would look like. Okay, number 5. We are looking at all the numbers that are less than 0 or all the numbers that are greater than 7. So we're going to place the zero and the seven like a number line, and all the numbers that are less than or equal to symbol, equal to would be to the left, and all the numbers bigger than seven would be to the right. Notice this is an open circle, and this one because it has an equal to is a shaded circle. So that's what your, your answer should look like. So again, any number in the shaded region would make at least one of these true. Now look at what happens if I pick the number three, which is not shaded. Look at what happens when I plug three into the red equation. Is three less than zero? No, that is false. Is three bigger than seven? I plugged it into the blue one. That is also false. So notice the number three did not make the red one true and it did not make the blue one true. So all of these numbers that are in between that are not shaded, they don't work for any of them. They don't wait for any of them, and that's the reason why they're not shaded. We're looking for numbers that will work for at least one of them. So these are all the numbers that will work for one of them. All the numbers less than zero. Will work for the red, and all the numbers greater than seven will be the ones in blue. Okay, let's look at number six. It's kind of hard to explain when just kind of talking to a wall and we don't get any feedback. Now this was supposed to be an or, so um, I meant to change this to an or and I forgot to fix it. So this is an or. So we want all the numbers that are greater than one. So all the numbers that are greater than one or all the numbers that are less than five. So as long as the number works for at least the red one or it works for the blue one, it is said to be a solution to the compound sentence. So all the numbers that are less, so we've got to put one and we got to put five, those are our key characteristics. So all the numbers greater than one, and I'm going to put this one in color this time, all the numbers greater than one would be for here forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, it keeps on going forever and ever and ever, right? And then all the numbers that are less than five would be an open circle at five forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and, ever and we would not stop. 
So notice, what did we end up shading? The whole entire number line is shaded. And when the whole entire number line is shaded, you need to adjust your answer to all real numbers. So this is a special case. So all real numbers is our final answer because the entire number line was shaded. So what would that look like if I did it in black and white? So if I did it in black and white, again, so if we started over and I did it with like, say I was doing a pencil, I would mark my one and my five and all the numbers that are greater than one would be from here forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And ever. Notice I'm going way past the in equals the arrow. And then all the numbers less than five would be here forever and ever 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 and ever. So as I go this direction, it fills this up. And so I end up getting the entire number line, therefore it's all real numbers. Okay, so now let's look at solving an inequality. So we're gonna solve and then we're gonna graph. So notice that there's an or. So remember the definition of a compound sentence is that you have two inequality sentences joined with the conjunction or. So how we solve them is we just solve them individually. So you just use your algebra skills and you undo dividing by negative two by multiplying by negative two. And remember the reverse rule that if you multiply or divide by a negative, so I have to reverse that. And that's one of this sentence. And then I gotta come over to this side and I've gotta undo subtracting eight by adding eight. So you're just doing two inequalities, and that gives me n is greater than or equal to 9. So my final answer is n is less than negative 8 or n is greater than or equal to 9. You have to have your final or answer as your answer, so all of this is your answer. So it's important that you rewrite your answers so that it's straight across, right? Not like one up here and one down there, and you have to have your word or in there. And then we have to graph it. My graph is really low, so I'll just go ahead and put the graph right here. So we've got negative eight and we got positive nine. So we want all the numbers that are less than negative eight or all the numbers that are greater or equal to negative nine. So all the numbers that are less than negative eight would be to the left forever and ever and ever. And all the numbers greater than or equal to, so it'd be solid because of the equal to greater than nine, negative or nine forever and ever and ever, right? So that's what your work should look like. So basically you're, you're just solving two inequalities just like we did the other night. Okay, so let's look at number eight. So once again, the definition of a compound sentence is a compound sentence is when you have two complete sentences, one, two, and we're joining it with the conjunction or. So this is called a compound sentence. Again, I went to the park or I ate my broccoli. That is called a compound English sentence because they're two complete sentences joined with the conjunction or. So we're gonna, we're gonna solve each sentence. So here we have a one step and to solve this one step, isn't that two times K? So to undo multiplication, don't we divide? And notice I do not reverse because I did not divide by a negative. And it's probably smarter to rewrite that as k is greater than seven. And then or, right? And then we gotta solve this one and undo that three by subtracting three from both sides. Remember I told you at the very beginning, you have to know how to do your algebra because it comes back and haunts us in every single chapter. So this is your final answer. You have to have the word or in your answer. And we need to graph it. So this is our algebraic answer. And this is our graphical answer. So we want all the numbers that are greater than seven or all the numbers that are less than negative seven. So here's negative seven and here's positive seven. Make sure you have your numbers on the number line correct. So all the numbers bigger than seven would be from here forever and ever and ever to the and then all the numbers less than negative seven would be to the left of negative seven. So this is your final answer. This is your graphical answer. And then that is your algebraic answer. Let's look at number nine. 
solve the compound sentence. Notice a compound sentence has two complete inequalities joined with the conjunction. So we're going to solve these separately. Notice the first one is a two-step. We have to undo subtracting one first, right? You always undo adding and subtracting first. And never reverse when you're adding or subtracting. And then we have to undo multiplying by two by dividing by two. And I do not reverse because I divided by a positive two. Don't forget to bring down your or, that's part of your answer. Over here, instead of I could divide by one fourth because I'm multiplying, but isn't it smarter just to multiply by its reciprocal, right? People are still struggling with that. So hopefully you're working that out by now. So that's X is greater than negative 12. Notice I multiply by a positive, so I'm not reversing. It has nothing to do with this being negative. Um, it has to do with what am I undoing, and I did I multiplied by a positive, so I do not reverse. Now, in your final answer, make sure you bring it down and have it all in one line, your final answer. Make sure you mark it off somehow so it's very clear. Show your steps nicely, and then don't forget to graph it. So if my, your graph is too low, you're welcome to move it up like I just did. So I'm going to put negative 12 and 2. So we want all the numbers that are less than 2 or greater than negative 12. So all the numbers less than 2 is going to be equal to, and everything from here on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And then all the numbers that are greater than negative 12, would that be from here to the right forever and ever and ever and ever and ever? So what happened? What did we end up shading? Right, the entire number line is shading. So your final answer needs to be all real numbers. So that's a special all real numbers is your final answer. And so that's a special case, right? So this is kind of special in that everything got shaded. So now this is your final answer. So no matter what we plugged in to the original sentence, to this compound sentence, no matter what we plugged into the original sentence, it would make one of the sentences true. So everything's going to be a solution on the number line. So those are your compound ors. So tomorrow we'll look at compound ands. So compound ors, it is a solution as long as it works for at least one of the inequalities.